Hi, welcome. Um, in this video, I'm going to uh, go through problem 22. And in problem 22, it says, let f be the function defined by uh, the quotient of ln of x and x, okay? And it's saying, what is the absolute maximum value of f? Um, okay, so because it's asking for an absolute maximum, it's very tempting to choose answer choice E. Because generally, absolute maximums and absolute minimums are questions that are asked for a function that is given on a restricted interval, uh, on a, that is a constrained interval. So we'd be given some interval A to B to consider, and um, then we're asked about absolute maximums and absolute minimums. So it's strange that it doesn't have um, a confined or a restricted interval, therefore it's tempting to choose E. But this function, like an upside down parabola um, and other, other functions that are like that, only has one absolute maximum and in fact it only has one maximum so that maximum um, the one local maximum and that local maximum happens to be its absolute maximum also uh, I will look at the function analytically and try to figure figure out what its visual will look like roughly in order for you to uh, believe that which is I'm going to convince you of what I just claimed okay so first notice that f of x is defined um, when x is greater than zero because ln of x is defined when x is greater than zero moreover we can't put a zero in the denominator and we get it okay so for that then to, to consider f of x um, I've drawn uh, the graphs of the two functions h of x equals x which is the denominator of f of x and g of x equals ln of x the numerator of f of x um, and I've drawn them separately and they're a rough sketch but they're accurate Right, and so that's to say, for, first of all, that you have the two graphs here, the numerator and denominator of um, f of x, but also that we could write f of x as g of x over h of x, right? Okay, cool. So now, um, first, we know that this point here is one zero. Um, and it's, of course, here at one one. <clears throat> and, um, uh, also, um, you should have a hole here, you can understand it. That's not very serious. We've already said that here, okay? Um, but, but I am first going to consider um, an x value uh, in, in, inside f by, by looking at the interval from 0 to 1. The, remember, this is the coordinate 1, 0. But consider the interval from 0 to 1, right? Which is like infinitely many numbers between 0 and 1. Of them, Let's consider a number that's closer to zero than one, much closer to zero, and let's say that that number is one over 100. I would like to know what f of one over 100 would be like, and you'll see why that is of interest to, to me. I just want to understand what f is like over here between zero and one. Okay, so that's going to say ln of one over 100 divided by one over 100 which is to say 100 times ln of 1 over 100. Got it. Now, how could I approximate ln of 1 over 100? Well, first of all, um, ln of, let me write over here, ln of 1 over 100 is saying log base e of 1 over 100. So I'm going to first write that that is the same as log base e of um, 10 to the negative 2, which is true. And then I'm going to uh, replace 10 with uh, an approximation, uh, and I'm going to approximate it by using 9. So I'm going to say that this is approximately the same as log base e of 3 squared, 9 replacing 10 to the negative 2 power. And then, of course, that is in turn approximately log base e of 3 to the negative 4. And this is going to be roughly log base e of um, I'm, now I'm going to replace 3 with e which is not too far from 3 right so e to the negative 4 and this is going to say negative 4 so I've found an interpretation of a rough approximation of ln of 1 over 100 which is negative 4 so I have I would have 100 times negative 4 so this is roughly and this is really rough negative 400 okay but we don't have a calculator so uh, what I just told you, this is the best we could do. So what I just told you is, let, let's say that this point right there is x equals 1 over 100. If we were to graph our function um, 
f of x, which is this, in black, then the corresponding w y value to 1 over 100 would be all the way down here, and it would be like roughly at negative, uh, by the way, that's not supposed to be on the ln graph. That's supposed to be on um, our graph of f of x. And it's somewhere down here, not on the ln graph, again. And it's somewhere down there at negative 400, figure not drawn to scale if this were a negative 400, okay. So we get it. Now, next I'm going to consider the value of f at one, and you will see why this makes sense. f of one is going to be ln of one over one, which is zero over one, which is zero. So it looks like f is going to share um, this x value. Let me actually put this uh, value in uh, green so that we distinguish it, but it looks like f, f of one is going to be zero, so f is going to also go through zero, one zero, like g of x does. Well, it makes sense, because g of x, ln of x, the numerator is zero there, so fine, it makes sense. Zero um, over um, one, since x is one, so zero, okay. So it looks like our function um, f will start to come up, and then and then, you know, if it's going to have an absolute maximum, it will come towards zero. And if we continue on that trajectory, it will definitely peak on the other side of the x-axis. And then um, it will come out on the other side of the x-axis, right, over here. That will happen. But then if it's going to have an absolute maximum, it has to somehow decline. Okay, so to do that, to figure out if it declines, I think we could do that very easily if we do... Uh, and behavior analysis. That's to say, if we tried to figure out what this following limit is, if we could figure out what the limit is x goes to infinity of f of x is, then I think we're good. And of course, this would be the limit as x goes to infinity of um, ln of x over x. And um, here, we could, we could do this limit analytically without a calculator. Well, basically, you know, you have the function um, uh, x, which is that, and if we continue it in its trajectory, it's gonna look like that. And we have the function ln of x, which is this. And as x gets very big, which is as we go far, the gap between the two functions is growing. What I'm trying to communicate is that um, x is outgrowing ln of x very quickly. Because at, look at you know x, x grows very fast, this line, whereas um, ln of x grows very slowly, right? So. Um, so since the denominator is going to dominate the numerator, this limit is going to tend towards zero, right? So this is going to go to zero. So, oh, cool. We just said that f of x is going to go to zero as x gets arbitrarily large. So in fact, as we suspected, f of x would start to decline and it would, it would approach zero as x gets arbitrarily large. So this is a good, uh, what the green graph is a good sketch of f of x. So... Great. So then we've just established that it, it does in fact have an absolute maximum. That's all I've done up to this point. And now we must find that absolute maximum. Hopefully we only find one critical number and that will be the absolute maximum and we're done. And that in fact might happen. <laughs> I was going to tell you if it will or not, but um, I'll hold off so that it's not anticlimactic. Okay, cool. So we know how we're going to get here. It, it's clear that it only has one horizontal tangent which is right there, and I'm going to um, find that by finding f prime of x and setting it equal to zero. So um, f prime of x for our given f, which is right here, is going to be, using the quotient rule, the derivative of ln of x, which is one over x, times the bottom function, which is x, minus the top function, which is ln of x, times the derivative of the bottom, which is one, divided by the bottom squared, which is x squared, got it. If I simplify, this is going to say 1 minus ln of x all over x squared. So f prime of x is equal to this. Therefore, uh, there are two critical numbers. Um, one of them is when x equals 0, and that's because f prime is undefined when x is equal to 0. But even f was undefined at x equals 0, remember? It was defined for x greater than 0, so we don't need to worry about this. So the other critical number is where f prime of x is equal to zero, which is where this numerator, the numerator of what I just circled, is equal to zero. And that will happen when one minus ln of x is equal to zero, which is when one is equal to ln of x, which is when x is equal to e. Got it, perfect. So if that's when x is equal to e, 
Um, then uh, we don't have the answer choice. No, we jumped the gun. Let's answer the question. The question says, what is the absolute maximum value? So x equals e is where the maximum value is attained. It's not the maximum value. To find the maximum value, we must plug in e into f. I'll do that over here, and we'll find that f of e is, is going to equal ln of e divided by e, and ln of e, we reckon, is 1. We used it over here, right? So it's 1 over e, and therefore, correct answer choice b. All right, I hope this helps. Take care.